Oops. No. Move then. Move. Okay. What are you doing? Oh, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I got a message there that said there's an error, but it, it looks like we're live. Hey, everybody. Dan here with John. Hey, John. Hey. How are you? Good. All right, here we I, are. I was just gonna. Let, I saw it was live. I was just gonna let you keep going to see. Yeah, what you, you would, have, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm used to making an idiot out of my idiot out of myself, so it's not a problem. So, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us here at the Designer Show, and we're gonna continue our conversation about what should be in a set of construction drawings. And it's it's really as I, the more as I, I research this and do different things with this topic, the the it, the more I'm finding that there's a lot to talk about here, okay? It's just not a matter of uh, measuring something and boom, draw something and you're done. It really is a fairly complex pro uh, complex uh, process that we all go through to create a set of plans for our projects. So, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'd like to take one second, though, and talk about uh, my web or the website, Chief Experts Academy. So let's just take a quick gander over there, and I want to show you something real quick. It's, uh, where do we go here? All right. John, you don't even probably know about this yet. It's uh, a couple of things. Um, again, the Pro Academy, if you're uh, interested in learning a lot more about Chief Architect, join us in the Pro Academy. I got some stuff I'm going to be posting here next week about templates and new classes I've got coming up specifically for Pro Academy members. So I'm making a few changes. We're not going to do the free webinars on Thursdays anymore. We're going to do one free chief architect training as part of our designer so show series. So the third Friday of every month, we will do a chief architect training. All the other shows will be uh, various topics. So the other thing I'd like to point out is we added a new little tab up here called Marketplace. So this is where we're going to be posting software, books, uh, technology, tools, things that I think both John and I would agree are um, things that you should have in your business. You know, the Markup and Profit Contractor Guide. This is a book that I've recommended that everybody get, whether you're a designer, contractor, whatever you're doing in your business, you should have this book so you understand how the construction process works. This is by Michael Stone. It is the best book uh, ever about construction. So highly recommend it, get it. And he has it on, Audi, uh, on Audible too. So you can get the audio book as well. Recommend you get it, listen to it while you're driving job to job, whatever you're doing. It's awesome information. Michael did a profitable sales. Michael's, you know, so all these products up here are, are markup and profit software, markup and profit.com. Um, uh, things that they offer and everything that they offer is awesome. So check it out. And if you're looking for a subcontractor manual, an employee manual, any of these things for your business, check it out. It's really good stuff. Um, I just posted, we just posted a little thing here about the tripods that John and I use when we go out measuring jobs. John, you speak to this. You know about these. Um, yeah, yeah I, I really like them. I, I've actually been borrowing yours every time I've used I it. Know. I went to buy one the other day and I couldn't believe how much the freight was on yeah, it. Yeah, that's like the 70 bucks just for the freight. That's the one downside. That's the one thing about buying their, their tripods that it's like drives me nuts, but it is, it's what it yeah. is. I, I mean, if, so, if we weren't paying for that, we'd be paying for it on the price of it or something. Yeah. So bite the bullet. But, uh, I yeah. don't like it either. Bite the bullet. Get the thing. You'll love it. You'd be glad you yeah. did. So get, get the biggest one. So you got plenty of space for your mouse. Yeah. Get the ultra with the large tabletop and get the yep. carrying cases that go with it. You'll spend about two. 220, I think, total with the shipping. Yeah, so it's somewhere still, there. Maybe still, a little bit more. Still a pretty good price for what you get. So anyway, I just thought and, I'd mention that. And uh, I just want to I want to mention too that I have tried a one that's less expensive. It isn't it isn't even close to the same. So yeah. it's not even worth trying the less expensive ones. Yeah. So yeah, get that one. It's really worth it. All right. So let's get back to uh, our topic of the day here and uh, what should be in your construction drawing. So I want to dig into a few different topics here. So let me just, um, uh, I don't really have a presentation that I'm going to be uh, showing, uh, but I do have a lot of things I want to show. So 
one of the first things I want to talk about, all right, it, when we get into creating plans, and by the way, I want you guys to be leaving your comments. Hey, Jeff and, and uh, Bill, how you doing? We got Brian, Michael Moore, Tony, how you guys? Thanks for joining us and thanks for uh, posting here. So, and, and I'd like you guys to keep uh, posting your questions throughout this. This is a conversation that we want to have today. So this is where I want you guys to be involved. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about are the different kinds of plans that we do in the process of creating plans. <laughs> okay. From very detailed plans to not so detailed plans and everything in, be in between. Because you think about it, you know, if, if you're doing a, you know, big project, million dollar, multi-million dollar house or remodeling project, you know damn well, you're going to have a lot of plans and a lot of detail. All right. If you're doing a simpler project that uh, doesn't require as much detail, yeah, you don't need to go that deep into it. So, so if we take a look at a couple of different examples here. So this is a remodeling project. You know, I, I specialize in remodeling. I've been doing that my uh, entire career. Uh, plus, I, you know, I really only built one new house, I think. I participated in the building of one new house in my career. Everything else I was did as a remodeler. Uh, I was a 20-year remodeling contractor. So remodeling is really at the core of me. I, I love remodeling. It's really fun. I love figuring stuff out. So when you get into remodeling plans, yeah, you're going to probably need more detail. You're going to need notes all over the place. So if you've got a plan that you're going to be giving to your subs or your employees and, and you as the designer, or you as the owner of the business or whatever are not going to be involved in the project very much. You have to have a lot of detail on your plans to be able to communicate to your people what it is they need to have to build the project correctly with the least amount of mistakes. Would you agree with that, John? Absolutely. Okay. So, so in this particular remodeling plan, they're adding an addition here. And so we needed to get in there and do a, a good as built. And, and again, that's, as built, we've covered those in the first, what is it, the second, third, and fourth show, I think, that we did here, John. Yep. I think um, so. so go check that out. And again, you can you can find any of our past shows in the blog at Chief Experts Academy. We always post those up over there in the blog. And if you just scroll down here to the categories and click on the designer show, and that'll take you to all the shows, and you can scroll right through each show that we post. So had some, we've had some great guests so far. This is our 18th show, so that's kind of exciting. You know, this just started as an idea. Let's just try it and see how it works. And we've been really having a great time with it. So cover lots of different topics. And uh, so when you get to the as built, yeah, here's number show number five, um, show number four, and show number three. There's some really great information about getting information, measuring buildings in that show and getting some information that you need. So I highly recommend checking those out. But anyway, so again, so you're going to have a lot of detail. So if you know those parameters going into the thing, okay, you know it's going to cost, you know you're going to have more time involved in the planning process. So someone's going to have to pay for that, unless you like working for free, which none of us do, but most of us end up doing it once in a while. Anyway, um, I know you never do, John. So. I, I don't mind working for free if all my other needs are taken care of and all that good stuff, you know, wants and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a good point there. You know? Really good point. So, um, so here, you know, detailed kitchen plan. So we just, you know, we got into a lot more detail and here's the existing structure. So again, having a good as built is the key to starting any remodeling project accurately. All right. So versus another kind of a plan where I, I've, I've had a client for many years, I think he, he just recently retired from doing building, uh, drew a lot of plans for him, uh, Bruce Rydell is his name. And this is, I'm actually missing the backdrop picture for the plot plan, but that should be there. He does a lot of nice little houses. And am I missing a link here too? No. And... <clears throat> So he didn't need much detail. He needed enough detail to get the plans through the building department. 
because he's going to build it anyway. He's on site. He knows exactly what he sold him. He knows exactly what he's building. He needs enough information to, uh, to, to get the permits and to communicate with the clients what right. they're going to get. So those are the two key things that he was looking for. Um, so there you go. So uh, this particular plan, I mean, it's still got a fair amount of detail in it, but you know, no little bitty details about, you know, certain connections and all that stuff. And this is it. It's a seven page plan. I think that was it. Yep. It's got some three D's. Um, Bruce was having a good time uh, because the chief had released their 3d viewer. So we were using that with all of his clients. And I don't know if you guys, have you guys been using the 3d viewer in chief? Not, been, not very, I haven't very much. Will you send out the model? Um, so if you're not, I highly recommend it. So if you open a plan and you go to file export and you go to export, um, or you got to bring up a 3D view first, that would help. So let's bring up a 3D view and then you go to file export. Come on. Missing a file. Yeah, that figures the older plan. So here's the plan. Okay. Nothing fancy. It's a very simple house, very low budget house. Um, but when he, you should see the work he does. He does some really good stuff, really high quality for small houses. Um, but you go file, export, export a chief architect 3D viewer file. I'm not going to do it right now, but if you try that, you'll, it'll, it's going to upload to your chief architect account online. And then you can send your clients a link to that file and they can go, to, they can get it. And they can go zoom around their 3D model, walk through it, do whatever we're doing right here without having Chief Architect. All they need is a browser. They can do it on their right. phone. They can do it on their pad, their laptop, computer. I recommend, I always tell my clients, do it on your computer with a mouse. It's a lot easier. So, Put put some terrain on there quick just to <clears throat> do and a few flowers and stuff like that. And maybe a sidewalk to spruce yeah. it up a little bit yeah when you're sending it to people unless you know depending on what stage you are in the process but yeah, yeah. i highly recommend that so so there's kind of a couple of different guidelines you know simple to more detailed and even my detailed plan is not as detailed as i've seen a lot of people's plans right um i tend to not get into that many details uh jeff does it do into oh, here let me go back we've got a few questions here um we got tom welcome Tonto National Forest. Cool. Frank. <clears throat> Surrey. UK. All right. Way to go. Thanks for being here. All right. And cool, cool. You guys are amazing. So Jeff says, uh, or John says, 3D Beer works great for helping the customer see the plan. I exactly. And uh, I highly recommend that. So does it do interiors? Yes. So, um, when you have your, again, it's just, you can do the same thing with the 3D viewer that you can do with the chief thing. You can zoom in and walk through it. Um, you, you can look at everything within the thing. You can even use, it even has tools in it like the, the uh, cross-section slider. So if you tell, show your clients that they can uh, toggle the, the top down like this, then they could look at each floor if they wanted to this way. So they can do that. They can't turn things on and off. They can't do much of anything other than view it, cut it, do things like that. So it's really a great tool. Highly recommend it. Give it a shot. Is this, is this the same file that you would send them if they wanted to take it out to their site and with their iPad and theoretically look through the window and kind of see what the view would be? They don't get a file. They get a link okay. to a model that they can right. view. Um, you're talking about Chief's thing called, I want to say Soulist. So they have a name for it. I can't remember what it's called. Maybe someone remembers. Um, yeah, if you do it on an iPad and you use one of the settings within that file, you can see the uh, the uh, terrain. You know, if you're looking, if you're standing on your lot and you hold it up just right, you'll see through the windows what that look looks yeah. like through there. So. Yeah, when um, they demonstrated that two or three years ago, um, it wasn't quite perfect, but it, it was something. Yep. So Brian, he needs enough information to get the plans approved. So um, I sell the 3D viewers an extra. That's <laughs> a good like idea, that, Bill. Uh, yep. Not yet. That's what we're here for. Let's uh, let's put some more products on our shelf. 
All right, good for you. So Bill, is it a one-time fee for the customer or each time you put in a new one, do you charge them for it? <clears throat> All right, so let's get out of that for a bit. Oops, get to this one. And so the so that's a little bit about the type of plan that you're creating. Now, um, again, not so detailed, very detailed, everything in between. So where do you fit? Watch the client that you're working with. Find out how the plan is going to be used. Pay attention to that stuff because, again, if you're working for a homeowner, um, the requirements are going to be different than if you're working for a contractor. Homeowners might not know what a header is. They might not know what a floor joist is. You know, so you got to watch the terms. You got to watch everything. What show, we had a show not too long ago, John, where someone mentioned that um, they even put a uh, clause in their agreement that if they're doing a plan for a homeowner, um, they're not responsible for terms or something like that. I don't remember what show it was, but the homeowner needs to understand building terms. Right. So um, I forget. Oh, that was probably in our agreement when we talked about yeah, the agreement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a good one. Um, <clears throat> Jennifer says the 3D viewer is a great. Is great unless client wants to view on phone and they have to download the app. Yeah, I always tell clients, use it on your computer or your laptop with a mouse. It's I find it really difficult to maneuver through the model um, with the little controls they give you in the viewer. It works, but I, it's just so much easier and smoother to do it right on your computer. Um, what's the best type printer to use? Whatever one works for you. What size do you want to print, Frank? That's one of the questions we'd have to ask. Um, you know, all, they, they make a lot of D, D size inkjets now, the HP 120, 125, I think it is. Uh, Epson makes a really nice one. They all come with a roll feed. Uh, about a thousand bucks will get you into a really nice printer. Yeah, I've, I've got an Epson that was quite a bit less than that. Um. Like I paid like two fifty for mine or something like that. John was tired of. Yeah, yeah. I'm at my daughter's house, but even the piano. I, I mentioned this last week. The piano is a green screen, so I don't play the piano. Yeah. Um, but I'm at my daughter's this week, so we're not set up that cool. way. By the way, Alex, I get nothing from laptop from advertising laptop tripods. I, you know, the Michael Stone products. Yeah, I make a small commission. Um, I don't post those things in the marketplace for that reason. Um, I, I post if you see something posted in the marketplace, it's because it's good for it'd be good for your business. So that's cool. You you'll enjoy being able to set your laptop up while you're measuring a house, and just move, pick it up and move from room to room, adjust it the height you need it set at. It's really nice. And even if you're not drawing on site, get one anyway and use it. Now you got a place to set your tablet while you're sketching out the building, and you can carry that room to room. Now, you don't have to always fight to find some place to set things. Anyway, um, so what are some of the options that you offer? So, again, we talked about this one other time. And, and as you're creating a set of plans, again, as we dig deeper into how you create a set of plans, what are some of the options that you offer? So, again, if you're going to do a more detailed set of plans, you're going to have more options in those plans. And... We're going to go look at a website here in just a minute. Uh, I want to show you guys something, but let me just show you this right now. This is a little spreadsheet I have that you can get the Pro Academy. And the uh, it's kind of like it kind of goes through. It gives you food for thought about, you know, there really is a lot of work that goes into a set of plans. And keep in mind when a customer sees your final product, they don't see the hours and hours of different ideas that you tried, the different layouts you tried, the, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about, John, all of the different things that you, you do that get you to a certain point in the plan. And, uh, okay. yeah, I could, just, could just show them your, your time tracker sometime. How many hours you're on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Working but, on it. Yeah. If you guys don't know, chief does have a time tracker that you can click on and, and look at the time in the program. So if you click on this little icon right here, looks like a little uh, um, spreadsheet with a clock on it. 
it'll tell you how much time you have into that plan. Now, the, the trick with that is it stops every five minutes. So if you're or, working or on plan, whatever you set it at. Yeah, you can change that. So if you're working on a plan and you go do something else for five minutes, it stops tracking your time. Right. Um, so just keep that in mind. And um, I, have, I have some techniques I use on a spreadsheet that I can kind of break down the different days and things. If you ask me at their next chief uh, deal, I'll show you how to do that. It's kind of slick how it works. So anyway, let's go back to that spreadsheet. And uh, <clears throat> so again, as we look at this, you know, all the different things just for the as built that you can do, you know, pictures, you're going to measure the lower level, upper level, the whole house. You're going to measure a room, you're going to measure the whole house. You gotta, do you need to measure the lot? Do you need to measure outbuildings? You need to stop and think about that stuff before you agree to go do an as built. Ask the questions. What do we have to have in this plan? Um, you know, is that outbuilding involved in the process? Do I have to have setbacks? So if you start asking those questions, you can start putting better um, estimates, I should guess, at how long it's going to take you to measure the thing. Even if you're just doing it by hand, but on a piece of paper and then going back to your office and doing it, which I don't recommend. I recommend you do it, measure it and draw it on site. Um, John, you've been doing a hybrid of that. Right. Which is kind of cool. Um, we'll have to have you on sometime and you can show us your system. Is it starting to work pretty well for you? Um, yeah, we haven't been doing it that way the last couple of weeks because uh, we've been too busy trying to keep up with other, other plans. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, when we did it that way, it, it worked well to have. And what, what, what Dan's talking about is I go measure it, put it on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, send it to my daughter, and she starts putting it in chief. And by the time I'm all done, she's uh, identified some problem areas that I need to go look at again. Yeah, yeah. I like Brian's comment here. A building department wants us to practically print the whole code book on the plans. I, yeah, yeah. I, I feel for you. When people call me from California to help them with plans, I cringe because that's kind of the case there. Brian, are you from California? Where are you from? Um, Alex, I have an idea. Maybe 15 minutes at a weekly show you guys could critique our plans. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. We'll have to do that sometime. Printer, HP T120 24, 600 bucks for years back. Yeah, it was a Model 200, so that's a good one. Also, take a lot of pictures. Um, and again, when we talk about the as-built, taking lots of pictures, do it first. When you get to the job site, the first thing you do, not the last thing, but the first thing you do is take pictures of the entire project that you're going to be involved in. gives you a keen awareness of what you're going to be measuring, what you're looking at, plus at the end of the appointment or at the end of your time, you'll say, oh, sh wraps, I have to leave now. And so you take a couple quick pictures and you leave, you get back to your office and you realize you didn't take enough pictures. Do it first. It'll save you a ton of time. Um, the other thing I've been doing as far as pictures go that works really slick and, and uh, Becca really likes it is I'll walk through with the, with the camera, the video going, and I'll talk to her about it as I go through. Tell yeah. her we need to pay attention to this. Yep, that yep. Kind of thing. That way she's able to get a feel for the, the flow of the house better than she would if it was just a bunch of static pictures. Yeah. Brian, I nailed it. You're from California. <laughs> uh, HP120 is excellent. Real work hard. Just get the roll feed too um, if, you, if you get it. Hey, Vicki, at least one picture straight on so you can figure out the roof pitch. Yeah, if you can get straight on pictures of the elevations, um, you can actually just bring those into chief. If you can straighten it out a little bit, and then you can actually measure the roof pitch. You can actually scale those and measure off the drawing. So it works pretty well. Um, so, but moving on to what you're going to do in a plan. So you're going to do conceptual plans, okay? The whole house, you know, then you're going to roll into preliminary stand, uh, planning stage. You know, what's going to, you know, what are you going to be working on in the, in the prelim? So you've got, you know, basic ideas. Now you roll into more detail. And then you finally are going to roll into the final working drawings where you get into really big detail. That's where your sections and the framing and, you know, you start specking things more in more detail. So you see there's a lot of things that are going on there. But that's not it. OK, now someone's got to do a, an estimate, a proposal, a contract. Someone's got to create all those documents. Is that part of your portfolio? Is that part of the things that you offer as a as a designer? And, and there are lots of guys that do that, lots of people that do that. So. Um, 
is is there a process exterior walls first interior walls doors windows uh alex go back and watch the as built shows because we did talk a lot about that whole that whole process that you go through to create an as built we shared a lot of information in those shows so highly recommend it um, i think you'll pick up a lot of tips especially if you're going to go do your first one on wednesday that, the key thing is you need to do both even if the exterior is just generic you know just wall lengths mm -hmm. You need to do both because you're not going to see what's going on on the inside, um, especially if you don't draw it on site. Yeah, yeah. So draw it in chief on site; those things will show up. If you don't, and you're just sketching it out on paper, you might have some issues. Yeah, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the as built course, but your first as built will take you a whole lot longer than your fifth as built. Okay, because you're learning some techniques, you're getting comfortable, you you you're getting used to the concept. And then you, you know, as you get more used to doing it online or on site, you'll even you'll even learn that if you're doing it on site, you can save up some things to do back at the office with extreme confidence because you know you've got the right information to take back. So, so just keep that in mind. Vicky, why do you use different rates for different tasks? Whatever, I just have numbers there. There's really no rhyme or reason why I have numbers there. So, I, um, I didn't even realize what I had put on the spreadsheet. Um, so use whatever rate you need to use. So um, interior design, uh, that's part of it. Product selection, furnish. I mean, I don't get into any of that kind of stuff. You don't. You wouldn't want to use the colors I choose. So, uh, but as far as space planning and all that goes, I'm pretty good at that. So um, structural engineering survey. Someone's got to do all of that stuff, and and then you get into um, you know how you're going to cost that out by the hour, by the square foot. Uh, Project value, swag, wag, wag would be the wild ass guess. Swag would be the scientific wild ass guess. This is more of a scientific wild ass guess. What we're doing here, so we'll call this a swag method. Um, actually, you can get more than that. So, so there's all sorts of ways to do it. Keep track of your time. Track the time. You know, go back and look at the projects that you've drawn in the past in Open Chief's time uh, tracker thing, and you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see what you're putting in. And keep in mind the layout page has a separate time tracker than the floor plans, than the plans. So, and if you save your plan, it'll everything will move forward. So that's not a problem. So you got to look at your layout page and your plan track time tracker. Okay. So that's a little bit about this, about what goes into a project. Now, what I'd like to do is take you to a website. Okay, and I've mentioned this to some of you guys before. Oh, Dan, you want to mention where this uh, Excel spreadsheet is located again? It's on my computer. <laughs> but you have it in Chief, Chief Experts Academy too, right? You know, I have to go look. I'm not sure. But okay. if it's not there, I will put it there at my next opportunity. Okay. I've got a bunch of things I need to add to the Pro Academy. All right. Okay, so if we go and we look at, um, what am I doing here? Uh, I want to take you to a website. Oh, actually, let's talk about this for a second. This is kind of interesting, too. I, for the heck of it, I just went and asked Google um, a few things. Oops, what did I just do? Let's get that back over here. And so what I decided to ask him is, um, what are the types of buildings that are out there? So this is something you want to consider, too. Do you have a specialty? that you like to offer or that you're really good at that you can advertise a little bit harder than um, other things. You know, if you like doing more old style Victorians or, you know, restoration type projects versus brand new, you know, contemporary homes, um, you know, if, if something makes gets you more excited about designing, Focus on that a little bit more and make that part of your advertising. That doesn't mean you can't still design all sorts of different projects, but, you know, pay, you know, try to do more of the things that you're more interested in that you really like to do. So all I did was I searched um, uh, types, list types of buildings and uh, one of the top links came up with the wiki page here and it just kind of listed out the different kinds of projects that are out there. So it's kind of fun to look, research some of this stuff and just go, oh, yeah. There's a lot of different types of projects that you have to design. You know, you guys have to know about all this stuff too. If you're designing all of these different kinds of projects, you kind of got to know a lot about a different lot of, about a different kinds of projects. That's got a lot of value that you're bringing to your clients. So keep that in mind when you're out pricing your services. So 
Uh, John, you want to comment on that? Got any comments on that one? Not at the moment. Not at the moment, huh? Okay. Whoops. I accidentally clicked the wrong button on my computer. So another thing, um, do you specialize in certain types of design? All right. So another thing to keep it keep in mind. So again, I just Googled different types of design just for the heck of it. Um, you know, modern design versus contemporary design versus minimalist, okay, industrial. I mean, they all have their own flair, their own knowledge set that you would need to know about what goes into these different kinds of designs mid-century. So if, if you're getting into that kind of design, I personally don't. I kind of more of the space planner. Well, I shouldn't say that. I do a lot of building design that matches different styles, traditional versus um, transitional French country. So yeah, I guess I do. But you're a getting a lot of input from your customer when you're doing that too, right? You are. And, yeah. you know, and this is one of the reasons I really like remodeling. I'm really good at taking something that's existing and adding and changing it. it so it looks like it's always been like that. Right. Okay, right. so I've always hated these projects where you go look at it and you go, oh, God, look at that horrible addition. Yuck. So, um, again, pay attention to this kind of stuff. If you like a certain kind of um, pro a certain kind of design, again, market that a little heavier than the other kinds of design that you don't like as much. So let's take a look at, you know, and then again, there's, it goes on and on. You know, you got your typical construction, what we've been talking about. Then you got your green, ADA. Um, what are the types of uh, specialties are there out there these days? I mean, it's just, you know, energy effective. Yeah. I guess yeah. that'd be green. Energy efficient. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, so there's... it can be, but it's different too, I, I would think. Right, you know? right. So I want to have you, I'm going to take you to a website, Castle Building and Remodeling. Lauren's a good friend of mine and, and I just asked him here yesterday if I can show this off. And he said, absolutely. In fact, he's going to be a guest. I, on our... Yeah, I just love what they do. This is okay. great. He's going to be a guest on our show next week. Oh, so, excellent. So we're going to talk more about this. And let's talk a little bit about the process. If you go to castlebri.com, okay, castlebri.com, it's really an excellent website. And you will learn a ton just looking at what they've done. They do such a great job of educating the client. It's really amazing. So what I wanted to show you here, and it's not popping up right away. Oh, here it is. Um, he's updated his process show chart. Show me his process flow chart. Say that fast three times. And this is really interesting. And you can click this little button down here to download the PDF. So when you are talking to your client, you know, he says, share this with everybody. You guys should be using it if you need to. Um, he, it's not copyrighted. He says, feel free to use it if it works for you. So, I, you know, I've thought about creating one of these myself, and it's like, oh, I don't need to. This one's perfect. So, you know, he's a, they do, a, I think they're about a 10, 12, $15 million company. They do a lot of remodeling. They have four, four locations and Lauren, he's, he's a young guy that's just really gone to town and really built on his father's business. It's been a, it's a family business, been around for a long time, but he's really grown the company a lot and they really do a nice job. But when you talk about this, okay, so incoming lead, first visit, design, you know, just kind of look at the different things that go into the process, estimating, decision, prep, okay? And if you just look at all the steps that go into the design, there's a lot of stuff there. So um, I really like to uh, have you guys take a look at that. And the other thing, yeah. oh, go ahead. A lot of those things aren't really necessarily steps. They're just things that happen, you know, as yeah. you go, but they're things that have to happen. Yeah, exactly. And if you take any of those steps out of that process, like you take uh, detailed construction drawings out of that process, ouch, the whole rest of the project's gonna suffer, okay? Um, but there's some really good information here. The overview, uh, process flow chart, which we were just on, budget essentials. He, um, they do line item pricing, which uh, some people hate, some people love. You know, everybody's got their own way of doing things and whatever works for you. Yeah, I just um, like the way they have that on their website so that customers come in with an idea of what it's going to cost. They know. To do they their know. Job, yeah. You know? um, 
design selection. So they really do a good job of educating the customer through the whole process. Here are the four different locations. Uh, oh, they painted that one. Hmm, that was the original one. I guess they got rid of some awnings. Um, precise planning. All right. So again, this really doesn't say how to create a set of construction drawings, but it does. Okay. Because it's like, what are you going to put in your drawings? And um, again, they do a pretty good job. Here's a little th thing for you that I'd like you to take a look at. I love, I love, I love this. What he's done here, not as seen on TV. Uh -huh. so, so these are excellent. He's got two of these here, one for a bathroom and one for a kitchen remodel. Excellent, excellent job. So go watch them. Uh, uh, they're, you know, 10, 15 minutes and they're really excellent. So if your customer says, oh, they can do it in a week on TV. Uh, I would recommend they have show, go show them this because it, it's it's real, it's right on, and it's it's uh, it, it just does a nice job. So um, the other thing I told him I would do is under his work at Castle. If anybody's looking for a job, I said I would show his page. So <laughs> so I'm <laughs> showing that. So he does a real nice job, and this is a good example of on your website too. If if you are looking for people, well, put it out there, man. Um, they, their minimum is 15 bucks an hour that they start at. So that's cool. And uh, so these are the different types of people they're looking for. As with a lot of people out there looking for good people now. So whatever you can do to get yourself out in front of people, do it. So I highly recommend it. But if you're looking for a job, great company to work for. Um, yeah, they, they do a nice job. And they're all chief users. They've, many of them have been there a long time. Have you done drawn for Castle at all, John? Nope. Oh, okay. Haven't. Yeah. Uh, Michael Pox done a lot of work with them. So here are different kinds of projects. So anyway, very nice website. I, I recommend you study it. If you're looking for ideas for your website, this is one of the best I've ever seen. So I give him an A plus rank uh, as far as his quality of website and educating the customer. And he's uh, had that out there, what, for 10, 10 years plus do this kind of format, hasn't he? Pretty much, yeah. It's been a long time that he's yeah. been had this process out here. Um, yeah, they they don't hide, they're very transparent. They don't hide anything. They they have on one of the pages they show exactly their process, um, what their sales are every year, how many you know. Here's Castle by the numbers. It's really interesting. They do a nice job. So I'm I'm really excited about getting Lauren on the call. That's Lauren right there. So um, he's he runs this this thing, and uh, that'd be fun. So next week, be sure to join us. That'll be Lauren. Kat. I'll be uh, here. Cool. Um, what do you got any messages here? Um, I've been using Hose to have clients to make an idea book. Excellent yeah. idea, Alex. Yeah. Excellent. Um, just, yes. Just make sure that when they're doing that, they're they're noting what it is they're looking at. You know. Yeah. What they it can, is they like about the picture that they selected. Exactly. They can add notes to the. Uh, they can add notes to the. Um, <clears throat> pictures about, yeah, I like this doorknob. I like this handle. I like this color. Right. Um, make sure they add that kind of stuff. Um, okay. Alex rook pitch. I tried to get the attic, put one edge on a piece of paper and the floor joist crease fold. There you go. That works well. Yep. Um, I, don't, I know that I don't know about other phones, but I know iPhones even have a level in them. That's what I use. I just hold my phone up to the bottom side of the roof. If I can get to it and yeah. get the angle. Yep. And, uh, it's a good idea if you're putting it on the roof, put it on a little board first because the warped shingles can throw it off by a couple of degrees right? Um, really easily. Yeah, I usually, so, usually try to do it on the inside Yeah, yep. or put it on a, on a fascia or something. Yep, span a longer space. Yep. Um, so I'm going to ask a question and I'm come back to it in a minute. I want you guys to think about this and I love your comments. What, to you, what is the hardest part of starting a plan? What's the hardest part of starting a plan? Okay. Um, think about that. And I'd love to hear your comments on that. In fact, I think I even have a little thing here to remind you to say that. Here we go. We're going to put that up there. So I'd like you guys to answer that. And uh, I want to talk about this now because, again, uh, it's not about just drawing something and printing it and giving it to a client. There's a bit more that goes into that whole thing. So what is that? And um, I've got some things that I want to talk about, but I really love to hear what you guys have to say. So if I get into um, 
I'll just bring this up real quick. If you're looking for a checklist on things you should be looking for in the building process, Google building checklists <laughs> and you'll come up with a couple. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Google's our friend. I mean, we can really get a lot of information out of Google. So um, people are posting stuff all the time that, you know, this is probably things on their website uh, that people have out there. And there's just a ton of information that you can garner. I mean, I have a checklist that I've used over the years with my clients. I think I have it on my website somewhere, but I mean, everybody's again, got your own way of doing this. So. And some of that checklist stuff you could, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here, go through, take the pictures, then go through and do the checklist for your, you know, your pitches and your ceiling heights and stuff like that. And then yeah. go through and measure it. Exactly. Um, one of the things that I give all my clients and, and I'm kind of leading into this question that I asked you guys, you know, uh, is, uh, how do you get the information you need to start a plan? Okay. Uh, it's called the discovery process. And <clears throat> I mean, the client says they want to build a you know 16 by 16 room addition. Okay, great. Now what? All right. There's a lot of discovery that has to go in that. Even like a kitchen or anything, you know, again, I keep telling people, you know, the whole, uh, any kind of a building project is just a matter of taking hundreds and probably thousands of questions and answering right. all of them. We should do that sometime just on a 16 by 16 room. How many questions are there to answer? <laughs> Quite a few. Um, I, I'll show you a few right off right here on that need to be answered. And that would be this right here. So here's a whole bunch of questions that need to be answered when you start a plan. Uh, you know, what's the building going to be built out of? What's it going to be made out of? And so, over the years, I've sent this to many of my clients, especially homeowners that call me and say, hey, I want to do uh, this and this and this. And then they send me their plan. And then I start asking them, well, what are you going to do for walls and floors and siding and roofing and what's your pitch? And it's like, well, I don't know. Um, so I just send them this blank thing and I have them fill this all in. And it's really handy. It really works well. I have one. I mean, it, it, it's not going to represent the type of foundation everybody has, but it's going to bring up foundation. And I got a one story and a two story sheet that I would, you know, depending on the type of project. And then again, if you're doing a story and a half and you need to measure it, if you have these dimensions, if you have this dimension, um, I can create any kind of story and a half that you want if you have that information. So it's really simple if you have those numbers. And then speaking of pitch finders, I used to take this page out and I would just bend the page and eyeball it up to the gable end and that would work too. Um, then I got a little smarter and got a pitch finder and then a digital level. And then of course, now we have the phone apps. So it's all sorts of ways to measure. Um, all right. So, so this is something, you know, so again, what's the hardest part about starting a plan is what are the questions that need to be answered? What is the discovery that has to go into it? Um, let's get back up here, getting the client to work for where did I leave off? um keep going up keep going up well you guys are awesome today uh digital lever for pitch cool roof pitch there it is doug norton um some municipalities interior it's the same the level of details required is astounding yeah go figure why is that why do you think that some of these cities require so much detail is it a, is it a liability thing is it a, a architectural involvement in the building department thing um, is it, is it what, I mean, who knows what it is, um, green waste pages and title 24 energy pages. There you go. So I, I've not had to do any of those things, but I know what you're talking about. Cause I've been involved with people that have, so you've got a lot of things going on when you're doing these plans. I used to think contracting was complicated. Now it's way more complicated involved with, cause all the things you have to know as a comp, as a contractor. Um, all right. I'm looking at my process set of clients. First visit, no wasting time. There you go. That's good. Exactly. A laser measure to do the pitch. Yeah. You, if you have the right laser measure, you can stand on the ground and hit two points and it'll give you the pitch. That those things work pretty well. You have that one now, don't you, John? I do. The good um, one. But even when I didn't have that, I would just take a measurement 
uh, at the low side of the pitch and measure over, you know, the width of the building or wherever the peak looked like it was at. And then I'd yep. measure the peak and I'd get my pitch that way. Yeah. Um, got a question, got a comment from John here that setting up default uh, for windows, doors, cabinets. Yeah. Not a lot of guys, not a lot of designers using Chief will do this. They'll take that 10 or 15 minutes, especially if you're doing an as-built, to uh, set all of the defaults up. Uh, Chief has gotten better that you can do it later in the process if you want to, yeah. but it really does make it easier if you set all that stuff up right away. Especially Getting the client for floor yeah. thickness and roof thicknesses and stuff. Getting the client to work for it. I think that's called marketing. I think that's a different class. So that, that's a really good topic. It is on my list to get to. So we will be talking about some marketing things. Um, Mark says, funny. Uh, doing the built drawings, it's like drawing two sets of plans. It is drawing two sets of plans. But if you have a really good as built, now you've got everything you need to draw a good set of working drawings for that project. Get the client to provide direction. That's your job, Bill. All right. So as a designer, one of the key things that you need to learn how to do is ask questions. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend that you Google um, Tom Hopkins. <clears throat> yeah, Hopkins. And uh, in fact, go to YouTube and, and listen to some of his stuff. He'll teach you how to ask questions. Okay. I, I, I back in the, when I was just getting into remodeling, um, I was heavy into learning, um, which I've always been. That's never stopped. But um, <clears throat> when I was, uh, uh, this has been the early 80s probably, um, I had two sets of tapes. I had Jim Rohn and I had Tom Hopkins. That's all I listened to when I drove anywhere. And I probably wore out one or two sets of Tom Hopkins cassette tapes. Remember those little tapey things? What was that? Because, uh, you know, those cassette tapes. <laughs> Um, awesome information. I mean, it, 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 uh, you got to really listen to it and pay attention, but he teaches you all these methods of closing, how to ask questions, closing on a, a professional salesperson knows how to close. And all that is, is asking the right questions. You're leading the client through a process to get them to an answer. That's what you as a designer is doing. Highly recommend it. Go learn something. If you don't do that, do Sandler. There's other training methods, but uh, I know there's a ton of free. I'm, I'm um, going to come to Bill's defense, though, because you came down kind of hard on him. Well, yeah, I know. There are some customers out there that will not answer questions. They just say, figure it out. You're, uh, you figure it out. You you're know? right. So You're right. Bill, I didn't mean to be that hard on you. But, yeah, <laughs> there are some tough, there's some tough cookies out there. And as a contractor, it's nice to do the design separate than the contract contracting. Because as you discover that this client's really hard to work with, you might say, well, you know, we just got really busy. We can't do your project now, but here's the plans. You go ahead and take it from there. Um, it's almost if I need to make uh, set up default settings checklist. Yeah, well, that's part of what my template's all about. Um, I'll help you with that. Uh, updating the video with Pro Academy. Yep, I will be. I've got, I'm making a bunch of changes the way that I'm doing things. So look for some change coming up. Uh, getting a floor joist size, ceiling joist correct, so I can develop a correct elevation. You know, there's some tricks to that, Claire. Um, John, what do you do to find joist size? I'll usually go to the stairway, if there's a stairway somewhere, and yep. look at it there. Sometimes measure I get it. lucky, and the mechanical room in the basement will be open. Yeah, measure the ceiling, and then the top of the floor yep. and the second floor, yep. and you got a thickness. The other thing you need to that, that's helpful is you know, knowing how a house was built when that house was built. Yeah. You know, yeah. Cause it's changed obviously over the years. And the more you know about that history, the more helpful it is. Plot plans. Yeah. Another way when you, if you have a floor vent and you take cover off, you can slide a stick down the side of it um, and then measure that length of that. It's a good you know, one. So, I haven't ever done that. Yeah. That works well. Um, go into the basement, look in the furnace room, right. not furnace, but there's usually a room in the Mechanical basement. Room mechanical that may or may not have the ceiling sheetrock. You might be able to get it there. Plot plan. Uh, you know, for sure until the building is opened up. Client sees, you know, one of the things about measuring on site and taking more time to measure, you'll find a lot of those things that you would not have found until you opened it up. You'll find them in the process of measuring. Um, it really works well. 
Clients see this in their mind's eye that what they want. You have to ask the right questions in order to see what they see. I need to get templates and standards set up. Yes, you do. Um, Vicki Worcester, question you need to ask. See, are different than the local question, logical size, budget, etc. Anthropology has helped. Cool. Cool. Yeah, but it really comes down to knowing how to ask the right questions. So, and that's part of you what you you're learning, you're growing, you're you're really getting into this industry, and it really does make a big difference. So part of um, I mean, John, we've talked about templates many times and, um, you know, we've worked together on it. You've, you're using the template that I've developed and, uh, and I use it and I can't imagine not using it. If I have to start a plan, if someone sends me a plan, the first thing I do is I copy their plan into my template. And because of the way I have it set up with all of the, uh, <clears throat> um, in fact, I'm in the process of updating the template. So with all of this stuff, you know. You know, that to me, the save plan views, even though we didn't know how that was going to work out when we first, when it first came out. Yeah. Has been the biggest thing to save in time. Yeah, yeah, but not I agree. Out especially. I agree. It, it, they've, they're finally getting things working together um, the way it's supposed to. And, and I agree with you that it's really come a long way. So. But really what it comes down to when you're drawing a set of plans is what are the views that you have to create when you're going to create a plan? You know, you're going to create an architectural floor plan. Oh, here, let me go to my this one right here, not that one. Um, it was really interesting. I was going through all these different uh, plans that I've done over the years. I've done a lot of plans. It's really amazing. And it's like... Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one. I remember that one. It's like, you know, when I would look back, I started, I drew my house back in version two. And I brought it forward every version. And uh, I still got it. And it still works great. And I just think to myself, how in the hell did we ever create anything back in the day when version two and three and four was so basic, you couldn't do much of anything with Anyway, so when you're working on a plan and you're going to create all these different kinds of views, give, you know, what I always recommend is plan the plan. All right. So you've gathered all this information and you've, you know, you kind of have an idea what the end result needs to be. You know, so I, I'm really used to remodeling, so I know that a lot better than new homes. New homes, I would think, would be a lot simpler because you need this, 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 and this, but a remodeling, you might need different things that are different. Um, that sounded really intelligent. Uh, well, exactly <laughs> what you meant though, Dan. <laughs> okay, good. So anyway, so as you're starting your plan, and again, if you have a good as, that's one thing I like about remodeling, you get an as built to start with. Okay, you go out and measure, you get your as built. A lot of people hate doing as built. I love doing as built because it gives me that foundation to build off of and, and it really works well. So, so plan the plan. And what I mean by that is if you were to go into the layout template that I have and you were to click on this and I created a list of what I would consider about 80% of the plans that people are going to need to draw the plan, the pages of a plan Does that sound about right, John, Is that yeah. pretty close, yep. the pages of the plan and then what's going to go on each page. You know? Right. So what stuff do you include on the architectural page? Right. So in chief, if you were to go in, into the layout and open this up, you'd see all of these things. And what I always do, sometimes what I'll do, not always, but sometimes what I'll do is when I start a plan is I'll organize my thoughts by organizing the pages that I want to end up with. Yep. So if I know I'm going to do elevations, if I'm, if I know I'm going to need a general notes page, I'll slide it up to the first spot. Okay, the page numbers change automatically. If I know I'm going to need a separate plot plan, I'll, po I'll pop it up here where I'm going to need it. Okay, I love, love, love how they've created this so we can shift the pages around on the screen and all the numbering and the titles and everything stay up to date. It's really, really nice. So, um, <clears throat> so there you go. So just plan the plan, okay? And then you go start creating those things. And if you, so if you know ahead of time more of what you're going to create, 
it does make the whole process a lot easier. Yes, I mean, it, yes. you know, some some of you are so, uh, some of you have been doing this a long time, right? Okay? So, so you know, you are you can kind of just like second nature. You know what you're going to do, but if you get if you're more if you're newer into this, you're just getting going. Yeah, you, you're going to have some things uh, that you're going to have to do. Uh, template is awesome. I'm actually going to be announcing in Pro Academy. I'm going to do three classes on templates here coming up. So. And I'll confess, I've been planning to do these short videos for a long time. I, it doesn't work. I, I, I can't do videos without a, an audience um, because I get too distracted. I'm a I'm a shiny object guy. So <laughs> <laughs> I admit it. I admit it. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm surprised we ever get anything done. I know. Isn't it true? <laughs> oh, God. It's awful. But if I have you guys here by, uh, that I have to uh, entertain, entertain. I, I, can do, I can do just fine. Uh, loading full sheet drawings when available in chief. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Tom. Uh, in California, in California, yeah. not chief. To, 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 I had taken that um, like a PDF or something like that. And I was going to mention there, if you are getting PDFs that you need to put into chief architect, I haven't tried it a lot, but I did come across an app the other day that you can do a PDF to a DWG. Yeah. And that would be very helpful if you could that's, that's figure, actually, figure that, that out. That program has been around for quite a while. Okay. Um, I actually, in Chief Architect, you'll find a bunch of 2D um, symbols in the library. Um, if we go to the, gosh, what was it? Back in the day, CAD blocks, designer, which one was it? Um, I don't remember. There's some people and some pets and things that are just line drawings. I actually did those many years ago with, with uh, it was called JPG to DWG or something like that. And, and then they can, you can also do PDFs to DWG too. It works pretty well. So um, I'm sure it's gotten a ton better over the years. You got three minutes to wrap it up. <clears throat> three minutes. No, we need more time. No. Um, competing all the bleep bleep information for the jurisdiction. Yeah. I hate doing details like that. It's just like, good, ultimate boring. But they got to be done. You know? anybody, anybody out there, it's just the opposite of that. There's a huge there's a huge demand for you right oh, there. If you love doing details, man. If and you don't just, like necessarily working with a customer, you know, yeah. with a client. Go, po go post over in their forum or you know Facebook or Chief Talk or whatever and say, yeah. I love doing details. I'll do your details all day long. Yep. Um, same with as built. Hey, I love doing as built. So I'll do your details all day long. And John, you've been doing a lot of that lately. Yep. So you you come down four hour drive from up north, and you'll spend a couple of days in town measuring what three, four, or five projects. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. only working for four, half a dozen dozen contractors. So yeah, so good for you. I mean, that's that's really good. Um, me too. I started a new one now, and it's always exciting. Yeah. Hey, John, you guys are pounding the apple cider vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Look, a squirrel. Oh, yeah. That's a, we had a joke. Yeah, we'll talk about that another time. Um, the squirrel. ProCAD AutoCAD clone offers PDF to DWG. Cool. All right, JPG. So we've got a couple, one minute left. Uh, you guys, thanks for being here. Uh, next week, again, look for, um, I'm going to, I got to talk to Lauren. He said he could do next week, but we have to firm that up. We're going to continue on with this kind of sort of conversation about this whole process that you go to create plans. I hope this is helpful. Um, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't meant to be how to draw plans in Chief Architect. This was meant to be that whole psychology that goes into creating a set of plans. And uh, you know, give you guys self, give yourself credit, you guys. This, this is hard work. This is not an easy thing to do. Um, I tell you what, the hardest thing for me to do when I'm working on a plan, the, the, the thing that drives me nuts more than anything is not knowing that I've got the right information. So when I'm drawing someone's plan and, and they don't give me that all the information about how the building is going to be put together, it drives me nuts because I know I'm going to have to come back and redo it all later. So it just, you know, in fact, let me I'll show you. I'm going to go over by one minute here, but I'm going to show you real quick. Um, I was helping a guy with a plan 
Let's see if I can find it here. Um, and the process that I had to go through when we first started was exactly what we're kind of talking about here. So if I go to Bill's plan here, and it was this one, and it was this one. First thing I did, he sent me this floor plan. First thing that I did was I asked him all these questions. Okay, what kind of basement? What kind of windows in the basement? Um, you know, what side, what ceiling heights, poor garage, you know, just all of the information that you need to know to put together the model for the building correctly. So, um, so that's just part of the process that you go through whenever you start a plan. If you don't know that information, it's frustrating because you know you're going to have to do it over again. It drives me nuts right. anyway. And plus, I don't feel comfortable giving a plan out that I don't, I haven't answered all the questions properly. So anyway, um, that's it for today. Oh, don't forget about the Excel file. Okay, thank you. Okay. And can you go back and just show that export thing one, one more time? Okay, all right. I'll take a moment and yeah. do this. While he's doing that, I just want to remind everybody that this goes up on the blog almost immediately or really- A couple, couple days. Couple it's, days. It's available immediately on YouTube and Facebook. Right. And it's available immediately on the same page that they're watching it on. But then I move it from there into the blog. Okay. So, so, so you can always cool. go back and watch it right away. Yep. So, okay. So here's the process. Whatever whatever you want to show the client, you're going to get a little bonus here today. All right. Whether If you want to just show the overview, bring up an overview camera. But We can't, um, we can't see your screen. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Let's show your screen. Uh, let me turn that off. Okay. So here we go. So we're gonna, we've got our model up. We're going to go file, export. Chief, Chief Architect 3D Viewer file, this one right here, okay? And again, you have to have the 3D view up. Yes, so get, you won't see that. that. Yep. Um, and that's going to prompt you to open up um, your account, Chief Architect. My password. Uh, yeah, you, get, you will log into your online Chief Architect account. So you have to have a current SSA uh, in order for that to work. And that's going to bring it up and so you can create a new model or replace an existing. I'll just go ahead and create a new one. Click OK. And it's going to be that. I can put a description here. I can turn on different cameras. So I'll just include all the saved cameras. Can you um, change the name of it there? Or is that just the name the of the cameras? File? Um, no, the name of the file. Yeah, you can change the title of this. It doesn't change the file name. It just changes okay. the title. That's okay. all it does. Yep, exactly. Um, and then you go to, and you can also include or um, exclude notes. So if you've used notes in your plan, those would be uh, included. Click OK. And then what it's going to do is upload that model to Chief's website into your account. And once that's done, it's going to pop up a little screen here that says, unable to copy. <laughs> that's not what I'm supposed to say. OK, it just it, it missed a picture. That's fine, um, because I didn't have it saved in plan. So. Don't click OK here. Click the link, and that will take you to your online account where you can log in. I have to type my password here. And then you'll be into your account. Come on. Oh, no, come on. My account. OK, here I am. So what you'll have is you'll have your 3D viewer models in your library online in your online library and here's the one i just created so i can make that public now so i can click the make public button and once i do that i can hit share hit copy and then i can email that link to my customer you could also do this which emails instructions about how to do this also or you can embed the thing on your website so you got those three options um, once you do that um, you could share it you could view it and this is what your clients will see when they click the link that you've sent them. They'll get a little button here that says load model. Make sure you tell them to click load model. And then once they do this, now the cool thing about this is you don't have to give them your chief file. All right, so when it comes up, um, okay, oh, good, they added a little message here. That's awesome, because a lot of people don't notice that. Because you look at it and go, ah, eh, it looks kind of plain Jane. But if you click over here under rendering techniques, you're gonna get standard. Now, now that'll turn all the materials on. Now you can walk through the whole model just like you can in Chief Architect. 
again, this plan is, you know, still in development. So we got a lot of work to do. And uh, they can look at this, walk through it. They can use the glass house so they can look at the thing as a transparent model. They can go back to the rendering tech, go back to cross section slider. They could, again, you can control, let me get out of the glass house. Let's get back to the um, standard. Okay, so there you go. So they can, um, so again, they don't get the file, but they get a lot of stuff here that they can look at. And it's really nice that they can, um, okay, let me get this up a little higher, right to there. So even with the roof on, they can still go look at the floor plan, just like you can in Chief. So it really works well. You've got some different options down here. Um, I'm using this far right one. You can go um, have the controls. So if you have just a pad without a mouse, you can use that or a phone. You can look at it straight down like a floor plan. Um, and you can, it looks like you can tilt it here. What do we got? Oh, this is the height that you're looking at. Okay. Uh, you can add notes. The client can add notes if they want to. I think they can, or can they just display the notes? I don't remember. I don't use the note thing that often. So anyway, so there you go. It's, that's, it's really simple. It really works well. And again, I always just recommend my clients do it on their computer using their mouse. So works good. All right. So we had gone over today, which I swore I wouldn't do, but what the heck. Um, so any, again, um, please check us out over at Chief Experts. We've got the Pro Academy is uh, 297 a year, and I've uh, got a lot of things there already, and a lot of things coming. You guys, thank you. Take care. And can you superimpose the 3D model live against the terrain or on the iPad? I think so. I think that works through. Yeah, he's, he's making that comment that you can. You can. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you can. Okay, cool. It's called Sojourn. Sojourn, I think is what they call it. Something like that. All right, we're out of here. You guys, thanks. We'll see you next time. This is Dan and John signing off. Bye, guys. See ya.